Howdy all, this is Shane and this is the third official mailbag video. I'd like to thank everybody who commented and asked questions on my last video. And this is a follow up to mailbag number two with all your questions on that and also from Facebook and Twitter. So we're gonna go through and start with Andy Orton who asked me if I could let everybody know how I go at Jerry's Guitar Shop in um, Sarasota, Florida. Absolutely, I'm hopefully gonna be able to film there for a day or two get a whole lot of stuff out on the net and also show you a little bit about the shop and you know post up all the relevant links so yeah it should be good fun I'm really looking forward to it and I'm hoping I can find a really cool lefty judging by what he's already got on his website and what I've looked at there's so much good stuff I don't even know where to start but all I do know is I'm gonna be walking away with something for myself as well so it's gonna be good fun so the next question is little shredder dude asks if I can do a comparison between the Fender Mustang 3 and the Blues Junior comparing tones and gig ability. That's something I can actually do. One of my good friends has a Blues Junior. I don't have mine anymore, but I, yeah, I definitely want to do that comparison. It's one thing that I've wanted to do for a while, just to put in perspective how much better, in my opinion, the Mustang 3 sounds and how much louder it is too. It's just, it's really cool. I mean, the Blues Junior is a, a good amp and I've used them for gigging, recording and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I think the technology of the Mustang 3 sort of like surpassed the EL84 15 watt combo. It really does sound better. But it's all personal choice. And if you're a Blues Junior fan, there's nothing wrong with that either. They're great amps. But absolutely, if I get a chance to do that video, I will. So stay tuned for that one. This is slightly off topic from the gear, but TRB198330 says, enjoy the States. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. If you come to Michigan, let me know and I'll tell you where to go and where to avoid, basically. And um, I've been to Detroit airport once and I went from there to Ann Arbor, Michigan when I was a lot younger than now. And I stayed there for a while, I loved it. I went to far north Michigan, it was beautiful. I'm actually a huge fan of the American Jewelry and Loan show, show the hardcore porn. I think it's uh, a really cool TV show, I'd love to go there. And all I know is I think I'd probably fly in, get a cab, get to that place and then get out. <laughs> I could be wrong. I mean, Detroit, I haven't been there for a long, long time. Last time I was there was in 1999, so it was a long time ago. But yeah, I might take you up on some advice if I get, you know, in that position where I, I've got to get my own way to, uh, to uh, the 8 Mile. Should be interesting. So, on to another question. This is from Marco Bignami, and he says, Hi Shane, great review as always. This was a comment on another video. I really love your Tasty Blues playing. I have a question to ask, which maybe you'll be able to answer in your next mailbag episode. So that's what I'm doing right now. Do you know any musical theory or are, are you simply self-taught? In any case, I bid you again my compliments. It was kind of a mixed bag for me. I started with um, basically just learning a couple of basic things on guitar. I learned like the Blues Brothers theme, um, just the, the bass line, and then I started learning a couple of simple chord shapes and started learning to apply them to different songs. Um, I then started learning a lot of blues stuff, mainly from one instructional video, which I got a lot out of, actually. It was a really handy thing. It was called Matt Smith, uh, Beginner's Guide to Blues Guitar. I wasn't too keen on going through books. I had a book and I just prefer to go via video. Video for me was a lot easier to hear it and see it and then apply it to my guitar and try to take the, the sort of essence of whatever particular lick or phrase that the guy was playing. I tried to sort of mimic that the best I could. And the great thing about Matt Smith is he's a great guitar player. You know, he's no personality like Greg Koch, but what he does exceptionally well is he plays blues great and he explains it really well and I was easy enough for me to get into and then after that I started with another video that just went right over my head it was Ronnie Earl's um, guide to blues guitar I think it was called and Ronnie Earl's video was tough I remember going back to it every six months and just picking new bits out of it but it's still lots of it went over my head until you know I went back to it about a year after that and then all the stuff became very very easy so it's a bit of a patience game. I think what I took was you learn a little bit and get it so you really can play it well and then learn something else. Try not to 
inundate yourself with too much new stuff because you'll just forget it and not learn to apply it properly. There's a few licks that I play more so now in my videos than maybe a year ago because they're the most new things that I've learned in that amount of time. But it's taken a lot of time for me to get them to a point where I can use them over any song and apply them. So that brings me to your question, I guess, which is, am I self-taught or am I, um, do I know a lot of theory? It's a mixture of both. The theory came after the application side of it for me. I don't know lots of theory. Some people just say stuff and I have no idea what they're saying. Like I said, it goes straight over my head, but I, I try to listen well and I try to pick things out of people's playing. And then no harm in asking questions. If I see Rick play a chord, I just ask him what it is, and I've pulled out a lot of chords. You see me play this A a lot, which is uh, which is here, and it's a very, very different shape. And that's something I didn't understand why that worked. So I asked Rick why it worked, and he told me. So I I've now have a little bit of theory in my head about why that works. Not to say I can just move it around and apply it like the Robin Fords and all that. I have no idea about a lot of the jazz stuff and all of that kind of stuff. I'm just a very simple player in my mind. I learned major and minor stuff. I combine them with my own feel, mixed with all this other stuff that I've learned and all my influences. So play the stuff that motivates you to wanna to learn and then work out later why it works. That worked for me and it hopefully it can work for a lot of people. It might not be ideal for a lot of people that are more intermediate. They might wanna learn a lot of theory stuff, but it's all personal choice. If you wanna study a book and then apply it to your guitar, go for it. But for me, learning off videos, like watching Eric Clapton play Hyde Park stuff, just be able to play a lot of that note for note. Um, and just, you know, picking stuff out of people's playing is some of the best stuff you can do for your own guitar playing and development, while it's still fun as well. And then eventually you'll turn it into something else and mix it with all this other stuff that you've got from all the other players. And that's exactly what Clapton did. That's exactly what I did. That's exactly what Stevie Ray Vaughan did taking stuff from Jimi Hendrix and Albert King. So yeah, everybody's taking stuff from other people and that's what I did the most of. A lot of the stuff I write, I write because the chords sound good to me and I don't technically know everything about that particular chord, but I know most of the shapes and that's important, I think, for not only writing music, but playing with other people is knowing, you know, four variations of one chord is very, very handy and it will help you complement other people. And you learn that by watching other people play with you or also playing with other people or watching what two guitar players are doing in a you know dvd one of your favorite guitar players it's always a good hint about how to learn so i hope that helps it's a big explanation and i didn't have time to write that one in you know in the comment section so um yeah i hope uh, i hope that helps and over to a fender mustang question as you all know i'm doing the fender mustang monday release of a patch I'm getting loads of questions. People want it to go longer than 10 weeks. I may release one every now and then afterwards, but uh, 10 all up is pretty cool. It's a bit of a big job making all these videos as well. So I'm just so happy that everyone's enjoying them. I also get asked a lot, will they work on the version one amps? I have no idea. I do know that there's different models in two, or in the version two than the version one. So I can't really give you a definitive answer whether or not every single one of them will work. I know that the two rock patch that I released, there wasn't that particular amp preset that I used in the version one, so it replaces it with something else. I mean, give it a go and tweak it around, but if it say replaces, you know, one amp for a totally different amp, then it's not gonna sound anything like it. So just keep that in mind. And if I do come up with any really killer presets, I'll definitely be releasing them down the track, but the 10 Mustang Monday videos, are almost all done on the on my side of it. Um, you might notice I'm wearing the same shirt in a lot of them. So uh, yeah, basically all those videos were shot in one day and that's how I'm sort of doing it right now. I actually still have to shoot a lot of the Mustang 4 ones because uh, I haven't finished them off yet and I haven't transported them via USB to my computer yet, which is the next job and then upload them and so forth. But, uh, but yeah, I'm just happy that everybody's enjoying it and yeah, just try it out. Let me know if you can get it to work on the version one amps. Over to another comment. This was on the Chicken Picks Guitar Picks video that I just released. And Hutch from BA, Jerry. Thanks for all the comments, man, over the years. I really appreciate you taking the time to check out the videos and comment on my videos. It's always cool to hear from you. So he mentions that he just bought the trial pack of Chicken Picks from the website. And um, 
Thanks for the nice comments about uh, my Florida trip. I'm really looking forward to getting out there. It's cold here at the moment. If I leave the house, the jacket's on. So I'm gonna be really looking forward to getting to Florida. And I'd love to know how you get along with those chicken picks, man. I, I absolutely love them. I still use them. They're on all my latest demos. The only time I might not use them is if I'm, I've put them down and I'm already hooked up to the um, microphone for my videos. But yeah, I'm using them this weekend at my gig. I'd love to know how you go you know, with the change and see if you get, or if you can explain the feeling of using them compared to what you've been using over the years. So yeah, please let me know how you go with those when they turn up. I also get a few questions about wondering where my band content has gone lately. Um, truth of it is I haven't had as many gigs as I would normally have had at this time of year. He is pretty quiet for our band, but not only that, I have been playing some gigs and they've been outdoors. So we've been like rained out where I didn't want to leave my, you know, expensive video cameras set up. And usually when I film my gigs, I'm leaving my video cameras up the back of the room or close to the band or wherever. And fingers crossed they don't get damaged. There's some places we play at where leaving the cameras somewhere isn't a great idea. They'll probably be okay, but I've had times where like, you know, pool table balls have come off the table and almost hit our guitars and stuff. And not only that, but they're near doors a lot of the time. I just don't want to knock them down. I'm playing this weekend and I plan to record. So if this is the other thing, if there's footage that's good enough to go up, not only audio quality, but if the sound, if the um, video quality is good and everything looks fine and the music's okay, I'll put stuff up. And I don't just want to put up any clips. I try to put up the stuff we do that I think people would enjoy, as well as being like happy enough with you know my playing, the vocals, the band sound, everything. So. As soon as I get a chance to put more um, music content up, I will. There's no reason why I'm not doing it other than the fact that I haven't got a lot of new content that's totally rocking. And yeah, it's one of those things. I don't like to put up sort of half-assed clips of us where we're not really cooking. I filmed a few gigs and they just weren't good enough, so I didn't put them up. I do have another channel, which I, I don't know why I really started it, but it's um, Shane's Band is the YouTube channel. I added like five videos to it, but this channel has like a hundred, probably hundred videos of our band over the years. So, you know, if you type in Shane Diorio Band, you'll find a lot of the old stuff, a lot of the new stuff, and some stuff I should probably remove. But uh, yeah, yeah, check it out if, you, if you'd like to. So over to Twitter now where Chris Hass asks me, do I know anything about attenuators, power attenuators for guitar amps and what's a cost friendly recommendation? There's so many different ways you could go with this. I had one for my Fender DeVille at the time, it was a 212 amp and I wanted to run the clean channel on 10. So I bought this like little passive matchbox style one that basically cut the output volume down. What it did was literally just create like a master volume switch for the clean channel, which essentially turned it into kind of like a drive channel. Your volume, your traditional volume on the amp would then be like the preamp and then that would act as a master. So it would go through the send and return effects loop on the amplifier and basically cut the volume down and you can get all the drive that you want. You know, that was like 10 bucks and I got it on eBay or 20 bucks, I can't remember. It was literally like one dial. I don't remember the brand. I actually gave it to Dr. Rick a long time ago and. I don't know if you still got it or not, but uh, I know he doesn't use it because <laughs> he's loud as well. Yeah, look, I kind of feel like it doesn't do you a lot of justice in the tone department. It may help, but you know, I don't know. There's uh, other versions you can get where they're actually powered and it starts getting complicated. I don't, I've never used one of those, but I know that there's all these different kinds of attenuators. The only one that I've used is this passive box that I got off eBay. So you can give it a go and see what you think. Some people think it makes the amp run too hard or not hard enough, whichever the way that it is, but give it a go. I never really affected my amp, it ran fine. I did a few gigs with it and then I just decided I was gonna use an overdrive pedal and turn the volume on the over overdrive pedal down and it worked fine. So just grab an overdrive pedal that you like, set that up as your clean tone. That would be what I would do. So Clint M on Twitter also asks me, uh, what happened to my 68 Deluxe? Nothing, I don't use it for the video stuff that I do for demos. I prefer the 65 mainly because um, it's consistent with a lot of the videos I've done over time. And not everyone will know what a 68 sounds like, even though I can, I do the clean part of it. They're not gonna know which uh, channel does what and they're not gonna know it as well as a 65. So I keep it 
very, very safe with that sort of stuff. Occasionally, I still use the Mustang amps on a deluxe preset. Depending on if it's just a modulation video, I'll tend to use the Mustangs because it's like, it sounds fine and you know, you can't really tell the difference. But the 68 Deluxe really has its own thing going on where it, it does sound different to the 65. I just don't want to mess with things too much, but you know, down the track I may use it more and more as they become, I guess, more popular. But when I play live, my 68's my go-to. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them on this video and I will then answer them on the next one. I may only do one more video before I travel and then hopefully I'll be able to still do videos while I'm away and keep the schedule to every second Friday. I may miss the first one, it might be jet lag, it might be whatever, so just bear with me if I do miss, you know, a foot, not this next one, but the one after that, then that's why I'm just gonna be pretty tired and probably, you know, from 20 something hours of travel time, so. Yeah, let's see how we go with that one. But uh, thanks for watching. And yeah, like I said, if you have any more questions, let me know on either Facebook, uh, Google Plus, Twitter. And I will always endeavor to reply to everybody. So thanks for watching. Catch you all later. See ya.